Um, today I want to talk about some itching that I've had. It's, and I honestly don't know if this is a, like a delayed reaction to the chemo and the radiation or if it's just like a seasonal thing. I have never had itching like this before. It is driving me nuts. And it started with the back of my head, um, just like the the part where the the neck goes up and then you know the skull, and just that one area. It it wasn't anywhere up around here or behind the ears. And I using the same shampoos, the same soaps, the same everything. Nothing has changed. And so I was trying to figure out what could be going on. And after about a week, you know, and doing research on the internet, it's like, God, could I have lice? Oh, God. You know, but I took a fine tooth comb and was running it through my hair. I never came up with anything, but it just kept itching. But then I was trying to think, where would I get them? You know, I'm not around kids. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm not around anywhere where I would get them. But it does take five or six weeks from when you get the lice to when you start itching. So, you know, it's like trying to think back that far. Where have I been? What have I done? Have I hugged someone that had lice? You know, this is Hawaii. We all hug each other all the time. And so, just trying to think back that far is, you know, I have no idea. Oh, so I went out and I bought the expensive lice shampoo with the little comb. 25 bucks for the shampoo and used it, no change. So it's not lice, thank God. <gasps> um, so... Okay, I've weeded that out. So, you know, it's like three weeks later, my head is still itching like crazy. I have tried over conditioning, you know, just putting more conditioner in and letting it sit and work its way in. That's not helping. I've tried putting um, coconut oil in. It felt great, like the first night, but then by morning, it's itching again. So I don't know what's going on. Then about a week after my head was started itching, my body started itching just everywhere. And it's, it's almost like a um, prickly heat itch. I, it, it's a very sharp kind of itch. I don't know how to describe it, um, but it drives me nuts. All of a sudden, like my foot will start itching and I just want to just go in and and I know that that's the worst thing you can do is scratch an itch, but I, and so I started trying every single lotion that I have on hand. And um, <laughs> it was hilarious. I do like half of this, you know, this half of my body in one lotion, this half of my body in the other lotion and see which one worked best. And um, the one that I found worked best is Corn Huskers lotion. You know, we just got another another hurricane alert. Um, I'll go over that in a minute. Um, Corn Huskers lotion is so far is the best thing that I've got in my arsenal. I've tried vitamin e, the vitamin E cream from the radiation. I have tried like some eczema cream that I had. I've tried a medicated cream that I had from a couple of years ago that I found in the back shelf. I've tried my regular Alba and you know all the other stuff that I have. And this one stops it longer. It's a very kind of viscous lotion, if you can see that. It's kind of like Astro Glide when it goes on. Um, so I only use it at night and um, maybe a little bit, I might actually put some on my arms and legs this morning. Um, 
I think the hair is the worst, though. I can't figure that out. And so I'm going to have to do some more research. I'm still looking at the viewfinder instead of the camera lens. And I'm really trying to cure myself of that. Um, but I'm going to do some more internet research today and see if I can figure this out because <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Um, but I will report back and let you know if I find anything that works. But for the body, the corn huskers lotion. Who knew? I don't even remember why I bought this. Um, I found it on the shelf behind the bathroom door, and there was just a little teeny tiny bit out of the bottle, so I must have bought it for some purpose and then put it away and forgot about it. I don't know. Um, but so far, so good. And okay, so for the hurricane, I'm in Hawaii, we're under a hurricane watch. I'm on the big island, or sorry, I'm not on the big island, my God. I'm on Oahu. <laughs> the big island has a hurricane warning. They're, because they're further south, they're closer to the hurricane. Um, so because they're further south, hurricanes tend to come up from the south. So the big island always gets the hurricanes first and the hardest and um, so uh, um, the Big Island and Kauai and Maui are all on and Molokai actually are all on warnings right now we're still on watch up here and the weather is gray and overcast and there's a little bit of a wind, but it's not really bad at this point. I have been here for seven years now, and we've only had one close call in that time. And I don't even remember which hurricane it was. It was about three years ago, I think, three, maybe four years ago. And we had really severe weather. It the hurricane itself did not hit. It downgraded before it got to the island, but we got the effects of the storm. We got a heavy wind. We got a lot of rain. They shut down city services in anticipation of the hurricane coming, but then it downgraded during the night, and so it didn't actually hit. The biggest thing was they shut down the bus service and everybody just flew up in arms. Um, you know, how am I gonna get to work? So this then the city said, okay, we'll take the buses to Waikiki because that's where all the hotels are. And those are the people that they want to get to work so that the hotel workers can go to their jobs. Forget the rest of the island. It doesn't matter if anybody works on the rest of the island. Let's just get the hotel workers. This island is crazy sometimes. Um, I went to went, I went to Costco yesterday just to pick up the stuff that I normally pick up this time of the month, although I admit I put it off. I should have gone last week, and I was just feeling kind of blah and um, kind of depressed and blah and didn't want to leave the house, didn't want to go after work, just too tired and... And so I kept putting it off until I got to the point where I was out of protein shakes. So I had, you know, I live on those things. So I had to go and I had just had to pick up the protein shakes and the protein bars. And that was all I needed. And then I had to go get gas, which I get every week when I'm over there because I do have to drive for work um, up to the other parts of the island. And so every week I Get, I top off the car with gas and I went into Costco first of all there's no parking at Costco luckily where I have to go it's right next door to Costco so I just walked over and I went in the place was packed I could not believe it usually if I go that time of the day it's not so bad and when I get in line, there are maybe two or three people in front of me. Line was all the way to the back of the store. 
everybody is stocking up on water, toilet paper, a couple people had generators, um, you know, and then they're buying all the food, all the spam and the um, chips and, you know, everything that you can just throw in a closet and hold on to. Except that's the problem. They buy all this stuff, the hurricane passes, they don't need it. Instead of holding on to it for the next hurricane, they eat it, they drink it, they use it all. The generators they'll take back because they didn't need them. So then when the next hurricane comes, they have to go through it all again. I'm curious if you're in another part of the states where we get hurricanes, you know, Florida, Texas, you know, the, you know, not down in the Gulf area. Do you do this too? It just blows me away that, that they just do this every time instead of holding on to what they've got, you know, buying it once, holding on to it through the end of hurricane season, then eating it and then, you know, doing it again next year, they do it, you know, like, oh, okay, let's take it home and just eat it. And, <sighs> and so I, luckily, you know, Costco's really great. They had all the lines open and, you know, so it went, I was probably in line for 10 minutes at the most. I mean, you know, from the back of the store, that's pretty good. And, um, and everybody was kind of good humored about it, kind of laughing about it. So that made it better. <laughs> but then I had to get gas as I was leaving. And it was the same thing with the gas stations. Typically there are two or three people in front of me. I buy gas every week, right about the same time. And all of a sudden the gas station is packed. The line all the way to the back, you can't get in because there are so many people. So there's a hurricane alert and all of a sudden everybody decides they're gonna have to drive somewhere. <laughs> this just blows me away. I, I, I would really love to know if this happens in other parts of the country uh, because Hawaii is a unique place. And there are some things that they do here that I know that they don't do anywhere else. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, uh, you know, I'll keep you updated on the hurricane. I don't think it's going to hit. I, I think it will downgrade and probably turn and pass by the islands. Um, just because of history, it, you know, we haven't, they haven't had a significant hit since the 90s on Oahu. Uh, now the people on the Big Island, um, Maui, they're having a rough time already and it hasn't even quite hit there. Although I think it's supposed to skim by them before it turns and comes up to our island. So I don't know, this, this is Hurricane Lane and it has done some weird turning things already that they're they're saying is unusual and um, we already had Hurricane Hector that just sort of fizzled out and went nowhere uh, didn't even really bring any rain or wind to Oahu I think the Big Island got hit a little bit but so you know I'll keep you posted if um, if I don't come back you know why <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <gasps>